Okay, so a lot of you know that I tried the Sigma FP recently and it is an amazing camera and it's something that could have suited me very well because it had nearly everything that I needed and I loved it because, you know, that full frame really converted me into that full frame look. And it wasn't something that I really bothered about before, even though I've used full frame cameras in the past and I found them okay and I thought it was all right, but there was just something when I really dissected that image and went into it, and then seeing it on the side by side with the P4K, I knew to myself at that point in time, I want to get a full frame camera. And the reason is just simply that a lot of the stuff that I'm doing lately has been for social media, for reels and stuff like that. And it's paying, you know, decent money, paying very well, allowing me to, you know, live a, a good life and buy things. So I noticed that a lot of these people, they want that kind of background separation look and it's just something that they want. It's not something that I'm particularly into. I'm not into reels really. I still prefer to shoot, you know, horizontal 16 by nine, but you know, sometimes you've got to go where the money is. As long as the person is creative and they're doing good things and I'm all for it. Anyway, I digress. The Sigma FP, you know, everything was amazing. The size would have been perfect for a gimbal or to carry it around to get those little incognito shots. It's very hard to shoot in certain places in London without getting stopped and talks, you know, asks about why you're filming here. So the construction of it, the build quality, absolutely amazing. I just couldn't get over the file size because the file size, you know, one terabyte NVMe and you're looking at just under an hour's worth of footage, it just couldn't run. Now, a lot of people, they said to me, you know, you can get slim raw and then you can convert it and all that kind of stuff and you, you won't lose any quality and it's good for storage. The storage isn't a problem. Hard drives to store stuff is very cheap. It's extremely cheap. I've got about 30 or 40 terabytes right now, you know, full of, full of stuff and I'm, you know, need to add more. The problem is, is that when you're going to a job and you're doing an all day job, sometimes if you haven't got enough storage, you're going to start sweating. I'm telling you, you're going to start sweating when you start seeing those, those minutes tick down. And it's not a nice feeling. To go with that amount of cards, just to make sure you're prepared for an all day shoot, it's not something that I was prepared to do. Now, I want to put this into context properly, okay? Because I don't think last time I did it. So I'm going to look at this whilst I'm talking to you. So the Sigma FP records 4K 12-bit up to 30 frames per second. So if we got the black magic and we go to 30 frames per second, I've got a 256 gig card in here and I've got it on Braw 12 to 1. Now 12 to 1 Braw is fine. There's no problem with 12 to 1. Maybe if you want the, the, you know, the highest quality, if you're going to do like VFX and stuff, then maybe you want to go 5 to 1, 3 to 1 or Q0 or whatever. But 12 to 1 is perfect for most things that are out there and your clients will never complain. Now at 30 frames per second in 12 to 1, 12-bit 12 RAW, Blackmagic RAW, I get two hours and seven minutes on a 256 gig card. Two hours and seven minutes on a 256 gig SD card, where you'd get one hour on a one terabyte NVMe. Now if I was to go up to 60 frames per second, I now get one hour and three minutes on a 256 gig card. That's impossible for the Sigma to do, firstly, because it can't do 60 frames per second. But secondly, because to do that, you would probably need a two terabyte drive and that would probably suck the life out of you. So do you understand my meaning of, of why I couldn't get the Sigma FP? It would have just been too much. And I, I, I just don't want to put that extra pressure on myself with that kind of memory. If it's okay if it's your run and gun, you know, little muck around camera, that's absolutely fine. Some of you I know use it for professional work as well, and it is more than capable of, of doing a professional production. But just for me, I couldn't do it. It's like, you know, I think one of the most irrelevant and, and um, illogical questions right now is, what is the best camera because there isn't one. It all depends on the person, what you do, what you shoot from day to day. Things can change so rapidly in this game. You know, one minute you're shooting some high class wedding in London with some high end people. Next minute you're shooting like a fashion reel with some uh, influencer, you know, but both of them are paying good money. So, you know, you've got to think about what you're doing. With the influencer, that 12 bit might've been okay, you know, 4K, but with the wedding all day, hell no. I do not want to go back to home with six terabytes worth of footage or 10 terabytes worth of footage and I'm having to, you know, decipher through that through my machine. It would just, it would kill me. Like, it would destroy me, I'm telling you. So yeah, the Sigma FP, it wasn't really the way to go. 
So, you know, but I did realize one thing that I really wanted a full frame camera, man. It really did light me up to the full frame world and having that nice background separation, even at high apertures, you know, F3.5, F4, F5, and you're still getting that reasonably nice separation. And when I saw them side by side, like I said, it was, um, it was crazy to, to see the difference between the P4K with the speed booster and with the Sigma FP. So from that moment on, I knew that I wanted a full frame camera. Now I have a friend called Joel, He's kind of like my guru. We met through the ESM group and we've been speaking for years now. And he kind of, he tests everything, this guy, like the OG, the micro, he owns a P4K. He recently just bought a red, an older red as well, and was testing the dynamic range and showing me all the intricacies about it, sending me footage and stuff like that. He, he owned the S5. He recently just bought another Fuji X-T4. I wish this guy uploaded more videos because he would be so valuable to people like us that are trying to find our way in through this thing. But anyway, he told me, Colin, look, if you're not going to buy the Sigma because of, you know, the 8-bit in 4K and stuff like that, and then the big file sizes, get the, the Lumix S5. I said, ah, oh, Panasonic, really? Panasonic? I said, like, after the VGH1, which I did love that camera at first, but then after a while, it started to get a bit tiresome rigging that, and then I didn't like the menu system. And then the Atomos, the way that you couldn't control any settings because of the Atomos. It was weird setting, man. I just didn't like it at all, man. So I thought, you know what? He knows what he's talking about. I've taken a lot of advice from him in the past. So let me just have a few, watch a few videos on the S5. And it was okay. There was some good stuff and there was some bad stuff as usual, but then I decided to buy it. So yeah, I bought myself a brand new Lumix S5. Yeah, just the other day. So the Sigma FP cost you about 1,100 pounds or so, uh, second hand used. But I bought this one for 1,100 pounds, brand new from a UK retailer, no problem in a box, Panasonic 12 month warranty, absolutely amazing. Perfect, perfect price. So, all right, I wanna maximize my money in this video game, you know? I don't want to spend 3,000, 4,000 on a camera. I wanna buy the most capable camera I can and use it until it's earned me four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 times its worth. So at the moment, we're already at a nice low starting point. Comparing codecs, we're talking 4K 30 and 4K 60, but 4K 60 is in a crop, but it doesn't matter. It, as long as it's there, I'm good with that. Um, and it's 8-bit as well, that's fine. Well, the Sigma FP, you don't have that option. It's just up to 30 and that's it. You've got no other option. Then going into 1080p modes, yeah, they both do slow-mo 1080p, but the S5 goes up to 180, which is amazing. Got a proper log profile, V-log, which I love as well. The Sigma FP doesn't really have a log profile when you go into, you know, the normal recording modes. Obviously in log, you can mess around with it a bit, but so far, the S5 just seems like it's just killing it. Then the S5 has a flip screen as well, so, which is lovely. I've definitely wanted a flip screen. Sigma doesn't have that. Then the IBIS, there's three different levels of IBIS in this. You've got normal, you've got the body, then you've got some extended IBIS, then you've got some electronic IBIS as well. I used it on the, a show I did recently at, at an art gallery and didn't need a gimbal, didn't need a tripod, didn't need anything rock solid, loved it. Pushing shots, pull out shots, panning shots, holding it while some people are talking. Absolutely perfect, man. No problem at all. Battery life. When, when I was using the Sigma, it was draining quite fast but it was usable you could probably get if you was doing a whole day shoot the shoot that i did with this at the art gallery with a sigma i reckon you would need about three batteries with this one it didn't even take half the battery of it i'll probably even say it was close to a quarter of the battery and i didn't even bother turning it off half the time just left it on absolutely stunning and yeah other than that it was just amazing i i, I was just loved it and i think to myself you know what this is actually perfect this is what, exactly what i was looking for with the Sigma and the Panasonic, you can use the uh, video assist. I opted to go for the Atomos Ninja um, for whatever reason. I have no idea, to be honest. I have no idea. But I got the Ninja. I think it was probably down to the price because these were going on a deal. Atomos had a deal going through June and, and one retailer slashed the price. So I got this for about 379 which is really cheap. So I'll just pick this up in, instead and it's no problem. So with the S5, you can do the internal 8-bit, 10-bit, and then obviously you can do those in log. And then if you record with the Ninja, you can do um, RAW as well as ProRes. So we've got um, 1080p, 4K, and then 6K using a Ninja. And then we've got all those other flavors as well. Most of them you can get on the FP as well. So that's not a bad thing, that's good. But with the S5, I just think it's a much better pairing and you've got a lot more, um, uh, how can I say, future-proofing going on right here. You know, a lot more going on right here. 
absolutely amazing and I really love this pairing so far. With the Ninja, the ProRes RAW are the same as the Sigma FP. You probably get about an hour per terabyte. So I wouldn't use that much. Maybe if I had a really a high contrast scene, I would use the Ninja to grab that one shot and then probably move back to internal 10 bit. But you know, it's there and I love it. And it works well because recovery on ProRes RAW is, is, is it's on par with the CDNG in my opinion. No difference. You can go from extreme, you know, bring it and to bring back all the details. So it's an amazing pairing. Right, enough chat about all that. Rigging, um, rigging wise, I don't like rigging anymore. If you see my P4K, pretty much run just like this. And I've got some other bits which I use. This was actually a uh, full uh, half cage, but I even took the top off of that. So that kind of just slots in straight there with the DJI plate that's on the bottom. Um, that can also go straight onto my gimbal, obviously. And then I have like a little ghetto battery pack here holder which I made which is just an L bracket and I've chopped it in half and then put this little cheap bracket on top and then we've got a, um, a Sigma V mount plate on the back can you see that and then that just goes in there and then that will just clip on the bottom there so I really run so lightweight these days because you know it's all run and run 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 so I need to run really lightweight these days and yeah, but I had to put a cage on this because I wanted to build it up. So what I've got on here at the moment, if we can get this in shot, I've got the small rig NATO rail, and that comes with the 15 millimeter rod in there as well. This was black, but I stripped it so it's silver. Yeah, and we have a cheap case from AliExpress, a cheap cage. I paid 28 pounds. I think it's about 33 pound or 35 pound with tax. Do not get this cage because it scratched my camera. So I had to build like a little buffer in the top here. And then I've got a Nitsi Ari Rosette on the side here as well. Um, you've probably seen that in a few of my videos. It will be, it'll be living on this camera now. And we've got our cable clamp from the BGH1 Nitsi cage as well. And I had to drill a hole in that just so I could shift it a bit and put it on there. Because I, like I said, I'm cheap, man. People think I've, I'm rich or I've got loads of money. The only reason why I have money to spend on this stuff is because I maximize everything. I don't like to throw a lot of stuff away. I like to repurpose a lot of things. Everything, man, I'm telling you, I, I, I wanna get us, <laughs> maximize the dollars. And the last thing is I've got a uh, Comlight lens adapter on here, EF adapter. Now, the reason I chose the Comlight is because I was watching Lumen, Lumen Gate visuals and he said that the Sigma version, which is double the price, if you put an APS-C lens on, it will kick you into APS-C mode, crop mode on the camera. I didn't want that. I want to stay in full frame mode. So he said recommended getting a Comlight and so far it's working well, no problems. 120 pound that was though, but not bad. So first of all, let's get a lens on this on this thing. So I'm using the, the Sigma 18 to 35 in here, but I use a few different other lenses. And yeah, it's a great pairing with these two. The, you know, the the, uh, the show that I did, the gallery show was shot literally just like this, but without the cage. It was just like the camera and the lens. And you can see my date here. She um, looks wonderful, looks lovely. And that was just shot here at this restaurant with this with this combo. And I think it's amazing. I think the colors coming out of it are nice and easy to grade. It's very light on the system because the bit rate is of the, of the uh, S5 is, is quite low. It's only about 150, I think, 150 um, Mbps. Um, so it's quite low, which is interesting, but it's, you can push it around so much. It's fantastic. But I'm glad to say it works very um, well on my system. Um, and then handle wise, if I was going to go like for a normal day, like no, nothing real shooting, nothing real strenuous, I'd probably just use the uh, tilter handle. And you've probably seen this in my videos already. Um, this is the tilter handle. Looks like it's about to transform into something. <laughs> and actually it does transform because if I press the button on the side, we can go into the, uh, the handheld. Well, you've seen all that in my video before. And then the reels for, sh for shooting reels and stuff like that. It's, it's amazing this handle man still love it still using it absolutely great so that's kind of like the the first kind of rig the the base yeah easy the easiest rig i'd say then if i wanted to use the ninja i would use my u rig and just clamp that on here and then we'd screw on the ninja it's upside down but don't, don't worry about it and then we'd get my Ari handle. So this handle was made from a old vintage Ari handle, which I converted myself. It was all beaten up. I painted it, sprayed it, coated it, um, cut off the top piece and put on a, hot, a cold shoe. And then I done the uh, Ari rosette mount as well with, by these two screws, which I drilled in here. Can you see that? Hope you can. And then we'll just screw that onto the Nitsi adapter. 
So once you've put that in, then you just connect your cables and you're ready to go. You've got like a nice sporty looking rig here. Very nice in the hand. Yeah, it's just a, a great rig. Yeah, it's very functional. All right, so then if I wanted to add a top handle, the top handle I would use would be the Nitsi Stinger. Now this was black as well, like these, like the uh, small rig uh, NATO rail, but I stripped it, had it anodized, the anodized strip from it, and then I brushed it aluminium myself. So yeah, it's looking quite snazzy, I must say. <laughs> yeah, I like to have my stuff just looking a bit different, you know, so you don't want to do too much, because obviously you don't want the lights and stuff when you're on set to reflect into that, but for the handle and for that piece there, it's nice. You can see actually it looks quite mean when you look at it like that. Then I would use a small rig uh, monitor mount for this bit. The small rig monitor mount, and let's put this in. Drop that in. And there you go, you have an even more professional looking rig, and then you'd probably just put your cables in. Now, I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't use it like this that much, to be honest. Maybe with the top handle, but the configuration before with the U-Rig mount, that's probably how I would roll, because normally I, when I carry my camera, I just carry it like this. I like to just grip it like this. I'm not into building big rigs lately, so I just find it easier if I can just switch, you know, around quicker, switch things around quicker, and yeah, just not have too much stuff. I like it, you know, light. So that's why Ibis was a, a big deal to me in, uh, in choosing this camera. But yeah, that's it. So guys, I mean, yeah, that's it really. What do you think as usual? I would love to know in the comments what you think about the Lumix S5. Coming up 18 months old now. I think value for money wise, it, it, literally it can't be beaten. The more I was looking into it, I think to myself, this camera is crazy for the money. And like I said, if you shop around 1100 quid, you know, I bought mine for, and there's always deals because there was a deal before, about three months ago, where you could get the Lumix S5, a 50 mil lens, and um, I think it was the, what was it, the 20 to 70 or something like that, the, the kit lens, both L mount, and they was taking 200 pounds off the normal price, and then they was doing another offer as well, some sale thing. So the whole kit would have cost you about 1,500 quid for two lenses and the S5. So they must be planning to bring out another one soon. If they do, fantastic. There's my one, and that's gonna be used for the next couple of years, and just make some money with it. So yeah, guys, let me know what you think. I'm glad you, if, if you're still here, I'm so happy that you got all this way. And yeah, keep on shooting, man, and, and just don't give up and just keep learning. Thanks, guys. Take care, and I'll see you on the next one later.